This is the final project presentation for Mechanical Engineering 1000. Um, we're Team 14, Samantha Anderson and Ashley Patterson. This is an axial flow design where it has a series of impellers on a, on a shaft and um, those push water over axially, so in the direction of the flow. It doesn't have any directional change. On the right is a radio pump, um, and that, as you can see, has water coming in and exiting at a 90 degree angle. And radio pumps, after mm -hmm. some research we found, are generally good for um, situations where you need more head and um, a lower flow rate. So we didn't think that that would be suitable. And then axial flow pumps are generally good for situations where you, that require um, low head and a higher flow rate. This is our design decision matrix slide. We have four designs that we were thinking about doing. Design A was the shaft with propellers and design D was the shaft with two different types of propellers. Design C was our inducer design and design D was our shaft with mixed flow design. From these four designs, we figured out which objectives and constraints we wanted most and how they weighed in our decision to our design. Our objectives and constraints that we chose were simplicity, high flow, cost effective, low friction, safe, no leaks, high pressure, number of required components like linkages or if it used a pulley system or gears, efficient and 3D printing ease. So this is a clip of our initial SOLIDWORKS model. So the initial design had um, three impellers on a single shaft within a, a short housing about six inches. Um, they'll be connected by an elbow to a two foot long intake tube. This all, all this piping would be two inches in diameter. And at the bottom, an intake bell. Um, let's see. Um, over here, some support beams just to keep everything level. Um, we initially were thinking to have two gears connected by a timing belt and um, obviously have those driven by the motor. These are our different design iterations. So our initial design, as you can see, was above water level and we have our intake valve here, which would be submerged in the water. Then we've got an elbow connecting to our impeller housing, which is connected to the shaft here, connecting to the gears, which is connected to our motor, and we have a pulley in between. And then from here, it discharges out. And so this was all above water. The only part in the water is the intake tube, which had a bell piece at the end to help with suction. And the problems with this design is it could not produce the necessary section to transport water and the timing belt proved inefficient and unnecessary because there was slippage. We tried this design multiple times and nothing was working and so finally we realized that our impeller system and pump itself needed to be submerged underwater. And so we flipped our entire design over. We placed it only the motor on top of the frame above the water and then we used gears to drive the impeller system which was under the water and we found that it only worked when it was completely submerged and that there was water in the housing all the way to the top that there was no um, air in the in the housing system and so that that was our solution to place the propeller housing below water level here's a solidworks model of our final design um, you can see the motor on top of the frame. Below we have all of our gears, um, drive shaft coming through here into the housing. You can see the impeller and the stator within the housing. And um, <clears throat> down here is a side view. So again, the impeller and the stator. Those lead to an elbow and a reducer. Ours didn't look exactly like this because Ace didn't have this um, set up but the reducer leading to a male adapter for a garden hose. After researching a bunch of different systems and water pump designs, we found centrifugal pumps, and these were said to be some of the most effective pumps, and there were two different types, the axial and the radial, and we decided on the axial flow.
And they're often called propeller pumps because as you can see the impellers look like propellers that you might find on the back of a boat. Um, these, involve, these systems involve a rotating impeller with stationary vanes that direct water axially. And as you can see, these are the stationary vanes. And these just direct the water. They don't really, they don't turn or do anything else except for provide a passage for the water to go through. Um, these generally create less pressure and higher flow rates than the radial centrifugal pumps, which was something that we were looking for and a big factor in why we chose this system. And as we learned, they are not appropriate for suction lift based systems. And this is our gear ratio. So this is these are the gears that were connected to the motor itself. And then we used a shaft to connect it to the actual gears that were this one right here is connected to the pump itself. This top image is from a SOLIDWORKS drawing of our 3D printed parts. Um, so this was a stator, and right here you can see what that actually looked like when it was printed out. Here's the impeller, and we were a little bit worried about printing because um, in class we talked about not having certain angles or curves. But um, it might have just been due to the fact that it's a fairly new 3D printer. We ended up not having any problems. There was a lot of filler material, but that was easily removed, and it turned out really well. Okay, here are the pictures of our final design. On the left, you can see um, the bottom of our design. So this is actually going to be all submerged in water, as you can see here. How this is underneath the frame itself, and the only part that's actually on top of the frame is the motor. We've got our producer and our male adapter piece to the hose, which is our outflow. Here is our 3D printed bell piece, which was used to assist with suction. And we found that once it was mounted like this, it actually worked pretty well once the water was at the pump level. On the left, you can see um, our gear setup we, uh, we ended up making. Um, it started with a 48 tooth gear, or you can see over here, and then um, we had three intermediary gears and um, ended with a 16 tooth gear. So we geared down quite a lot to try to increase the speed um, at which our impeller was turning. And here, this is what our impeller looked like with the stator on the shaft. So the stator was actually stationary within the pipe or within the housing, and then um, just the impeller turned. Here's a video illustrating the basic um, operating principle of our pump. Unfortunately, we were not able to get a good video of it actually working. Uh, when it was all set up together. Um, so we do have a video of how it would function on the shaft within the housing. So you can see the propeller turning within the housing. And from the back view there, you can see that the stator is actually stationary in place. And normally that would just be pushing water through over the guide vanes of the stator. Um, and then out through the other side of the housing. This is a performance analysis for our water pump. So what we see on the left is a current versus time plot um, over the course of 30 seconds. And um, the average current was about 240 milliamps. The max current when the pump uh, really began pumping water was 700 milliamps and then minimum current 104 milliamps. When I made the power versus speed plot and um, calculated where our power would have been, it was pretty low around um, one watt and the speed um, at at least 150 RPMs. These results aren't completely accurate, I think, because uh, we had a sort of interesting result where our pump pumped a lot of water over the course of about 20 seconds. And then when the water fell below, when the water level fell below the, the housing entrance, the housing for the impeller, 
it stopped pumping water completely. Based on the analysis on the previous slide, it's clear that the operating point of our motor was much lower than what it could have been. Uh, we operated at a much lower power than peak power, about 5.5 watts. We were operating around um, one watt on average. And one reason for that is that the, um, that the pump performed fairly well while the water level was above the pump housing. Um, and then it did not perform at all when the water level fell below that housing entrance, causing the speed to increase and the power to fall. Um, but our analysis also indicated that even when the pump was working well, we were still operating at a higher speed than um, is optimal, giving us less torque. So one way to fix that is to decrease the gear ratio and if we're going to do that, we would have to ensure that we had proper sealing between all the pump components so we could obtain a vacuum seal throughout the pump. And a tighter clearance between the impeller vanes and the pump housing might also help. Um, another consideration is the pressure change we had throughout the pump. At the intake bell, it, uh, we had a, a diameter of about two and a half inches. And then that narrowed to about one inch when we had to decrease to um, fit the garden hose. So going from about two and a half inches to one inch um, is a pretty large pressure difference and it could have been causing some backflow. Our budget, we ended up spending a total amount of $53.57, but our total amount for our final design was $42.09. So here are our recommendations for what we would do differently if we had more time to work on this pump or if we were going to um, do it all over again. Um, first and probably most obvious, we would submerge the housing well below the water level to provide consistent water supply. Secondly, we would decrease the gear ratio for reduced speed and hopefully more torque and um, we would probably first try going from our current configuration, which is a 48 tooth gear to 16 tooth gear, and probably just switching those so we had the opposite gear ratio and we actually were gearing up. Um, or perhaps actually before that we, we could try um, just maintaining the same gear ratio throughout. So uh, just maybe 48 to 48. Um, Vacuum seal between the components, Again, perhaps reduce clearance between the impeller and the housing. Here's the impeller. Um, there wasn't a lot of clearance there, but we did have to file down the edges. And so uh, we got um, probably about 0.1 inches, and it was variable, which is not ideal. Um, reducing the pressure change from the housing to the output pipe with a smoother reducer, such as this one, we had a setup like this. Um, there were a lot of sharp angles in there. And a smaller diameter reduction, instead of this two inches to one inch, we could go from maybe two inches to uh, one and a half. Um, another consideration would be designing a structural system which could um, stabilize the pump at a much deeper submersion. So we had it hanging about six inches below the um, below the frame and ideally we would have it at the bottom of the bucket so we need a sort of strong structural um, stability system to support that and then based on all of our findings um, one of our more important considerations would be to utilize some more easily replicable components so from the budget um, it turns out our design was really cheap. Um, it only took a few parts. It was simple overall. But because the impeller is a more um, complicated design and the whole thing is rather finicky, it has to be submerged at the it has to be submerged well below the water, which isn't ideal for well systems. Um, and and though it's possible to salvage boat propellers for the use of, or for the centrifugal pump system, 
um, that that's probably not really a good option. So, so this whole design is probably not ideal um, to replicate for at-risk populations at a low cost and in a feasible manner.